Hey, footy fans, time for the round six recap. Look, uh, it all got underway between the Saints and the Dogs. And what I thought was going to be a good game of football was completely the opposite. It was a one-sided affair. The Saints lose 64 to 124. It was all the doggies from the first bounce. And I know I shared my thoughts in the last um, recap about Luke Beveridge and the dog situation, um, you know, and the team selection issues there. He played Bailey Dale, he played Jack McRae on the side, and they made an absolute statement. One goal, 39 disposals for Bailey Dale, one goal, 30 disposals for Jack McRae. It was great to see them uh, really put their foot down and highlight how talented they are and highlight how crucial they are to these uh, to this doggy side, uh, whether it be getting the ball forward, um, you know, or really linking up plays. Um, it was just great to see. And um, look, it was a good win by the Dogs. Aaron Norton had six goals. Cody Waitman chipped in on the scoreboard as well. And uh, for the Saints, on the other hand, they were really poor. Um, at times, it just looked like there were empty patches on the field for the Saints, and the Dogs just ran into open space, got the goals, and strung out on the scoreboard. And, um, you know, got a, a really nice comfortable win in the end. On Friday, the Crows took on the Bombers and the Crows lose 75 to 78. Controversial umpiring late. I'm going to keep this short. I'm going to keep this sweet. Uh, the umpiring cost the Crows late in the game with Sam Draper falling on top of the um, football. That's holding the ball any day of the week. Um, that was a deliberate intention by Sammy Draper and uh, I didn't like the looks of it. Uh, yes, it saved those precious seconds late in the game. Yes, it got the Bombers over the line, but that should have been holding the ball, and it wasn't paid by the umpire. And uh, unfortunately for the Crows, the umpiring cost them again. Uh, you know, last season it did. This season it, it has again. So really unfortunate for um, the Adelaide Crows there. On Saturday, the Pies uh, took on Port Adelaide, and a very nice win by the Pies, 123 to 181. Uh, after a meeting, Mediocre start um, by the Pies. They started to get into a solid, consistent rhythm and uh, gain control of this game and get the win. So it's a great win by the Pies there at the G. The Blues, wowee, what a win this was against the Giants. 117 to 98. The Giants had control, um, you know, in that first half. But in that second half, the Blues came home really strong. Um, I really loved some of the link-up plays. Patrick Cripps um, was a ball magnet at times, a solid leader for this team, and a variety of other players chipped in, uh, like De Koning uh, and Walsh and a few others. So a great win by the Blues and a very solid second-half performance, uh, which saw them storm home and finally give the Giants their first loss of the season. The Lions took on the Cats, and the Lions lose 37-63. to 63. Uh, In wet conditions, I understand that it was a very slippery football out there. Um... But, gee, Brisbane have to be a lot better than that. 13 behinds in that game, only four goals. At times, they were um, lost with the football in hand. It felt like they didn't know how to go forward. And, you know, uh, contrast to that, the catch when they had the football in hand, mind you, they were without Tom Stewart after he picked up a, a bit of a head knock. Um, he'll obviously undergo the concussion protocols. For the Cats, when they had the ball in hand, although it was slippery conditions out there, they still maintained the football well, took time off the clock, moved the ball patiently up, uh, and somehow at times got a very fast break, whether it be through a player like Tyson Stengel or another player. So Brisbane were poor in my eyes, and the Cats, on the other hand, well, a handy win on the road, and they um, it's the first time since 2013 that they start the season 6-0 and uh, it's also um, for them they are the only undefeated team left in the competition so all the best for the Cats um, throughout the rest of this season hope for their sake that they keep it up the Eagles, well, they claim bragging rights in the derby, uh, beating Frio 105 to 68. Harley Reid, a great game. Frio were really poor. Um, they got some good plays together in the fourth quarter, but it was all over by then. The Eagles um, took control from the start. They were the better side, um, and Frio just didn't show up. And to see the Fremantle Dockers put up a great effort against Port Adelaide in the previous round to this, in round five, 
and then completely um, not show up at all, not have the effort, not be in the contest in this game. It was a really bad look on the Fremantle Dockers, especially in a derby. And uh, for the Eagles, on the other hand, well, well done to them. They're picking up some nice form lately. They've got Harley Reid. They've got Jake Waterman and a few other players chipping in, like Elliot Yo and Tim Kelly. And it's great to see that they've got a few stars to build off um, in these next few years for their club. On Sunday, the Swans beat the Suns 110 to 57, and my Roo boys unfortunately lost to the Hawks 68 to 113. I thought that game was going to be close. I thought my Roos might have been a very slight chance of winning, and they had a decent start. But after that first quarter, it was all Hawthorne and North Melbourne. Well, they're just um very poor, and uh, all I have to say to you Roo fans out there, stick through it. Stick through it, no matter how tough it gets, no matter how low we can go, stick through it. Because one day, and I don't know when it will be, but one day we'll have that success and we'll get that rebuild going. It's going to take time, we've said it for many years, but you've got to stick together, Roof fans. You've got to stick together as the Shinboner Army. Let's move on to Isaac's GMP of the round, my goal mark and player. My goal of the round goes to Cody Waitman, a good read on the football, kick the ball perfectly to get the spot on dribble kick. Um, the dribble on it was, um, you know, uh, as Dennis Cometti would say, centimetre perfect. Um, as it just dribbled along the ground, bent to perfection, straight through the middle sticks. Um, and in this modern day game, uh, you're starting to see a lot of dribble kicks out there. Um, I don't think that the Chief... The Chief doesn't like him too much, Jason Dunstall, but hey, if they go through for six, it's good in my eyes. A nice goal there by Cody Waitman. My mark of the round uh, goes to Will Hoskin Elliott from the Collingwood Magpies. We'll talk about a high-flying pie. Eyes on the footy from the moment Josh Dacos had that ball in his hands. And a nice little launch, a very clean grab, and for him to go back and kick it uh, was great to see in what was a very nice win for the Collingwood Football Club in front of a very nice crowd at the MC. G. My player of the round, I know Harley Reid had a good game and a few other players throughout this round, um, you know, stepped up for their teams. But I'm going with Brody Grundy from the Sydney Swans. One goal, 24 disposals, 29 hitouts, four mark, three of those four contested, 11 tackles, six clearances, three inside 50s, 150 metres gained, and the four score involvements. The 11 tackles is what I want to focus on. His pressure. For a player of his size, he's a tall guy, uh, big fella, you know, solid ruckman. But to see him get down and do the dirty work, um, you know, um, with the tackles, with the pressure he applied, with the six clearances, um, just a real rock for this team. And he was a jack of all trades in this game, whether it be on the scoring front, on the pressure front, um, or just, you know, really linking up plays and being that team player. So a fantastic game by Brody Grundy, and don't you love to see it? He's definitely fitting in well with this Sydney Swan side. Folks, Anzac round is right around the corner. Um, such a special round of football uh, to reflect on those who served for our wonderful country and gave so much for it. Um, Anzac round starts on Wednesday night at the MCG between the Tigers and the Demons. Um, and what a wonderful ceremony that's going to be before the game. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere, as it always is. And let's hope it's a very nice game of football and a wonderful round of football. I'm sure it's going to be. I've got the Demons by 23 points. I do think the Tigers can put up a decent effort. So that's why I'm going for the Ds by about three, four goals. As always, you got to love footy. If you like that recap, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below your thoughts on the previous round. And if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel. And for more of my content, make sure to follow my Facebook page and also my Instagram page. Plenty of more sports updates on there.